Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Friday, March 29th, 2019. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I've been tied up on some other matters, so it's been a few days since I've been online. So let's talk about some boxing stories that have caught my eye. Unbeaten, 154-pound champion Jaime Munguia, right, wants to fight Gennady Golovkin, and I believe he's serious. He's only 22 years old, more importantly, and I know people are concerned about the weight class here. More importantly, he is six feet tall. Understand, he's huge for 154 pounds. I'm expecting him to beat Dennis Hogan, who in my opinion just doesn't have the power to keep Jaime off of him. Right? Now let me just say, an argument can be made that the fight style that Canelo used in the rematch against Golovkin that got Canelo the win is the Jaime Munguia style. Collapse the pocket. Hooking. Heavy emphasis on power shots. Heavy emphasis on body shots. Pressure breaks pipes. Right? I think we need to keep an eye on this unbeaten champ at 154 pounds. He's aiming big. I'll agree that because Golovkin is well set up with the zone. In other words, Canelo's going to fight Danny Jacobs. One imagines the winner is going to end up fighting Golovkin. Why would Golovkin mess that up by fighting this guy at 154 pounds? But let's also remember that the best plans get upset at times. There was a time recently where Golovkin had to fight Vanis Martirosian because his opponent had some problem with tainted meat. Just understand that an unbeaten champion at 154 pounds who has size wants to take on Golovkin in what I think would be an interesting fight. Now let's talk about a fight that I think is a mismatch. Alexander Usyk against Carlos Taco. I need for people to understand who Usyk is. Right? In my opinion, he's really one of the three smartest guys in boxing. Right? These are the guys who can fight you righty, can fight you lefty. These are the guys who look like they look on film and then they decide, okay, I need to be in the pocket this fight. I need to be outside of the pocket this fight. For them, when we talk about a style, it's literally just a style. These guys change styles like the rest of us change clothes. And to me, those three wise men are Terrence Crawford, Tyson Fury, and Alexander Usyk. Now, if you have a jab, we found this out in the Anthony Joshua fight, and if you can maintain distance against Carlos Tackham, you can control him. Right? Usyk has an excellent jab. Usyk can maintain distance. Usyk has the better legs. Let me point out, too, I know many people view Usyk as a cruiserweight. Again, this is a guy who's something like 6'3". Don't get deceived by weight classes. Let me also say, size-wise, understand Usyk fits a traditional heavyweight size. Right? We're in an era of giants. Anthony Joshua. Right? Tyson Fury. Deontay Wilder, right? They have us looking up, right? These are big men. Even Dominique Brazil, big man. But understand, historically, the heavyweight division really hasn't been that way. Quite frankly, Usyk's size is comparable to, let's say, Sonny Liston's size. And Liston was viewed as a fearsome puncher back in the day, even though, in actuality, <laughs> he was really more of a jabber than a puncher. Well, let me just say, Usyk here, 
Better athlete than Tackum. Has the better legs. Has the faster hands. Can just look at the Joshua film and can just mirror what Joshua did against Tackum. I'm expecting a fight similar to Usyk's big win over Tony Bellew. Where Usyk turns it up a notch to make a statement and demolishes Tackum in the later rounds. The stoppage by Anthony Joshua was a little bit questionable, right? Tackum didn't really look that badly hurt. Very few men have gone the distance with Joshua. There was a question whether Tackum was going to go the distance. The referee made sure that he didn't, right? I'm not accusing the ref of wrongful conduct. I'm just saying that stoppage was a bit curious. I encourage the fight fan here to go look at it. I'm expecting Usyk, because he wants a shot on Joshua and other big names at heavy, Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, I'm expecting Usyk to try to get a stoppage here. Right? Because he's a clean puncher, moves better than Joshua, is more fluid than Joshua, and has the benefit of looking at the Joshua film, I'm expecting Usyk to beat Tackham Certainly some of my money is going to be on Usyk by knockout. Now let's talk about the Samir Khan fight. And I just need to remind people that this is really a gambling site. Right? I read the comments and people say, oh, why didn't you take the favorite? Well, because I want to make money and I'm looking for the best value. So hear me clearly here. If you had to pick a winner, right? I myself believe Terence Crawford, one of the absolute best in the sport pound for pound, beats Amir Khan. So if I were asked in the abstract, who do you think wins that fight? I would bore myself to death by saying the overwhelming favorite, Terence Crawford. But that's not how I'm going to play it. You're not getting value with Crawford. Especially not when Amir Khan is a 6-1 to one underdog. Folks, that's a joke line. You're telling me that if these guys fought seven times, Amir Khan would only win once? I don't believe that, not for a second. Let me also point out, too, the way I think life really works. Right? Don't fall in love with the idea of, oh, he's a better man than the opponent. So I'm just going to take the better man in the fight. He should win. Right? I got news for you. Right? Better men often lose in matches. Right? They often lose in matches. Guys who will end up winning the rematch will lose the first fight. Right? Fluke things happen. Upsets happen in sports. Right? Just look at team sports. There's a time there where one of the greatest basketball teams in history, the Chicago Bulls, with Jordan and Pippen, lost the playoff series to the Orlando Magic. Right? That's when Jordan comes back to the sport. Folks, they lose that series. Now you, the gambler, right, the, the non-gambler thinks of life as a certainty, right? The person who isn't in the stock market, the person who doesn't invest, right? They think the better option always wins. That's not the way it goes. That just isn't. Right? You understand that some days are better than others. That on some days, you would beat the version of you on your worst day. I've seen fighters come out flat. Right? I've seen Mike Tyson lose to Buster Douglas. I've seen Oliver McCall beat Lennox Lewis. Right? I've seen Vitaly Klitschko in cruise control in a fight, have his shoulder go out on him and he lost that fight to Chris Bird. Right? That's the world I live in. 
So when I see a fight like this, okay, I'll say to myself, if both guys, if both guys show up and Crawford's on his best, right, he's on his best, I think Crawford wins the fight. The way I'm playing it is I'm taking Khan at 6-1 to one to win. Taking Khan at six to one to win. I'm gonna hedge. I'm gonna hedge the play with Crawford by stoppage. Understand what that means. First off, this shouldn't be your core fight to bet on. This fight's high risk. I'm only talking about it because, well, this is the high risk part of the internet. This fight is high risk. Understand, Sammy Vargas went the distance against Amir Khan. That's Khan's last fight. I understand the argument that, you know what, the fight's in the USA. Crawford is a big name. Crawford is the champion. If this fight goes the distance, Crawford might win a decision. But the casino here is really not giving me that option, are they? I have to work with actual odds here. I have to make a decision here. What outcome am I going to give up? The outcome I'm going to give up is Crawford by decision. Crawford might well win a decision. I'm not saying that's out of the question. But what I am saying is, I'm going to take a taste of the 6-1 to one on Amir Khan to win the fight because I believe he has a high variance. Right? A very high variance. I believe there are some fights where you look at Amir Khan and he's operating at Usain Bolt level speed. I'm saying there's some nights where Amir Khan shows up He'll have a very tough southpaw across the ring from him, Devin Alexander. And then Khan will proceed to almost shut out southpaw Devin Alexander. And that's important here because Crawford is a switch. He can go righty, he can go lefty. My point to you is if he goes lefty, Khan is that rear opponent. That rare opponent who's not going to be bothered by it. In other words, when Khan is good, he's very good. When you're gambling on sports, you have to ask yourself the question. If Khan shows up with his A-plus game, where he almost shuts out Devin Alexander, Right? If Khan starts fast, Sammy Vargas, who can take a punch, is knocked down twice early. Early. If that Amir Khan shows up, and if Crawford, who is not a freak athlete, who does not have Khan's reflexes, if Crawford starts slow, worse yet, if Crawford shows up and he's just not himself, right? He brings his B game, not his A game, right? You have to ask yourself what happens in this fight. Understand, fighters are just like the rest of us. A guy could get a cold. Fighters have injuries they don't even really talk about. Right? Sore hands. Wasn't Floyd getting shot with lidocaine in his hands? Right? George Foreman, I know, didn't shake hands when he would meet fans. And this is a fan-friendly fighter. Because his hands were precious to him. Sometimes his hands were hurting. Right? Fighters aren't themselves some nights. 
Let me say this too about Amir Khan. He fights Saul Alvarez. Now we can dispute that fight. By the way, I have the highlights for Khan's fight against Sammy Vargas. Vargas knocks Khan down in the fight. In my favorites folder, you can take a look at it yourself. You're going to see blinding hand speed. You're going to see a combination puncher. Khan fought Saul Alvarez. Big name. Canelo. Right? Canelo, after this fight, of course, would fight Golovkin. He would fight Rocky Fielding. He would pick up a title at 168. His next fight's against Danny Jacobs. I know the judges disagree. Right? The one guy I've heard out there who agrees with me on this is Teddy Atlas. I thought Khan won every round against Saul Alvarez. Until he gets stopped. How he gets stopped is baffling. Right? Alvarez is far away, hits him on the chin. If you're Amir Khan in a fight where size is an issue and where you know the other guy has a big punch, how is your chin ever unprotected? If you start as fast as Khan did in that fight, and I understand the judges didn't see it that way, but if you start as fast as Khan did that fight, why would you be even close enough to have Canelo able to hit you with his right hand? Canelo's not even imaginative with the punch. The point, though, is take that fight. Khan's up on the scorecards. Big. Well, not on the scorecards, on my scorecard, right? The hand speed is dazzling. Very few in the sport have this level of hand speed. Very few in the sport can throw these kind of combinations. Khan has much more hand speed than Terrence Crawford, and he has sudden power. Let's remember he once drops Marcus Maidana off a body shot. He's that quick. Right? So, let's talk about his problems. Now, boxing is a sport that has guys who believe in themselves. Right? This is both a curse and a blessing for Khan. Khan is a narcissist. I don't say this about every fighter, but let's talk about this fighter. Right? He truly believes, in my opinion, and I'm not a psychiatrist. <laughs> I'm just a gambler like everyone else here. But I believe Khan really believes that he is the best, not just in this match, but in the sport. Now, it's a curse in that Narcissists tend to be blind to the actual risk involved. I'm sure Khan, after a fast start against Canelo, started to believe Canelo couldn't hurt him. Let's talk about another narcissist, Ali, who believed in himself. That first Joe Fraser fight, he's fighting Joe, his friend, by the way, right? Ali turns on him right before the fight, but Ali was selling the fight. I don't think Fraser fully understood that. So there was ill will there, but Fraser actually helped Ali financially, right, when Ali was out of the sport. Well, during that first Fraser-Ali fight, Ali was so full of himself that at one point he says to Joe Fraser, don't you know I'm God? And according to boxing folklore, Fraser was supposed to have responded, well, God is going to get his ass whooped tonight. That's, that's in the fight, right? Now, all I'm saying about Amir Khan is some guys are going to hop in the ring against Terrence Crawford and they're going to think, my God, this guy was the undisputed champion at 140 pounds. Undisputed. Right? This guy, this guy is beaten up. People like Victor Postal. Right, Crawford's the kind of guy who breaks you down. As I said, he's like Tyson Fury, and Tyson Fury's just getting back to who he was. Understand, 2015 Fury beats this version of Tyson Fury. 
right? He's like Usyk, surgical, where that Tony Bell you fight looked competitive. Then, about the fourth round, you started to realize, you know what, this actually isn't competitive. Right? Then Tony gets blasted. Bud Crawford is dangerous. There are a lot of guys who, in a fight against him, are going to be intimidated. Not this guy. You see the narcissism in the pre-fight. Right? Khan says, oh, I'm the best opponent he has ever faced. <laughs> This is Khan with multiple losses, right? He's, I'm the best opponent he's ever faced. Khan also says, I'm the bigger man in this fight. What I want you to do is to look at the heights of the two men. I believe one's 5'8", the other's 5'8 and a half. Right? This isn't exactly, you know, Khan against Canelo, who physically weighs more than Khan. Right? So Khan views himself as the bigger man than Crawford. Khan's such a narcissist, he told people before he fought Danny Garcia that he was going to knock out Danny Garcia. Then in the fight against a mid-range hooker, Khan with the better jab, the better movement, could have fought the fight on his back foot. Instead, Khan tries to collapse the pocket, gets caught. In other words, it wasn't just talk, folks. He really expected to KO a then unbeaten Danny Garcia and then in the fight took risks. That's the personality. Understand, too, there are holes in Khan's game. I've been saying here online for years, he doesn't move his head. Let me say this, too. You see that he gets caught clean by Canelo. Right? Doesn't have a hand up. Is practically defenseless. Look at how Khan gets caught. It's not like he has a hand up and Canelo slips a punch in and he's, you know, Khan's not turning away and then he gets caught by a great shot. No. Canelo's looking at him and Canelo must have realized, wow, not many guys I fight, <laughs> not many guys I fight are going to have their heads down around here. So that I have a shot to land flush on his chin. Well, what I want you to do is to look at the Sammy Vargas highlights. That fight takes place after. After. Khan's knockout loss to Saul Alvarez. And folks, I'm just telling you, when Khan gets knocked down, could the punch have been cleaner? Khan's backing away. It's as if, in Khan's mind, it was impossible for him to get hit with that shot. Right? He gets hit flush. In other words, this is the guy who, when he has a defensive lapse, it's major. There are other times in the Sammy Vargas fight where he gets hit and the announcer is Carl Frotch. And Frotch just comments on the fact that when Khan gets hit sometimes, his legs do a funny dance. Right? This is the kind of guy who you might be able to, in fact you can, turn the lights out on. Because that's what Canelo did. Right? Khan's body, this is the guy who, when he gets hit with shots, his body says, nah, that's it, man. We've had enough and will fall to the canvas for him. He doesn't have the option of taking shots and staying upright. He can't bluff his way through tough shots. Questionable chin. You might remember when he was younger. He got stopped by Breedis Prescott. He got stopped by Danny Garcia. Well, let's talk about recent fights. Right, he gets stopped by Saul Alvarez. He gets knocked down and he gets wobbled at times by Sammy Vargas. Those are recent fights. So understand, I'm aware of the fact that Khan is a vulnerable fighter. 
I'm just telling you there is the possibility that this guy shows up. It's Madison Square Garden. He's gonna have he's gonna have a lot of fans. Folks, he's gonna have a lot of fans in the crowd. Right? Cons fans travel. British fans travel. Right? New York that's a city a Londoner will travel to go to because it's like London, right? You got the water nearby, you got millions of people, you got overpriced real estate, you got a vibrant culture. There is a chance that Khan shows up, feeds off the crowd, thinks he's the best thinks this is an opportunity to beat one of the best pound for pound and then overwhelms Bud Crawford in the early rounds with dazzling hand speed. I view this fight as a fight of skill. Crawford's the more skilled fighter. Crawford's the guy who can fight different fight styles. Crawford can pin you on the ropes like he did uh, Ricky Burns right Crawford can slow down a fast fighter like he did Yorkies Gamboa Crawford can fight you left-handed Crawford can fight you right-handed I'm not sure as I sit here today after having watched many Bud Crawford fights whether he's right-handed or left-handed I think this guy is one of the most skilled in the sport. But there's a difference between a mental understanding and being able to pursue different strategies. That's what I consider skill. There's a difference between that and talent. Right? A guy doesn't have to fully understand a sport. He doesn't have to fully understand that his head is too stiff on his neck like Kant's is. To just be blessed with hand speed, punching power, reflexes. And that's what Khan is blessed with. When a skilled opponent like a Devin Alexander comes in the ring and is bewildered by it early on, right, that fighter might find themselves down four or five rounds. Marcus Maidana came back in the Khan fight. The beginning of that fight's not competitive. Marcus Maidana was baffled. The hand speed was just too much for him. Right? It's later in that fight, after he starts landing some big shots on Amir Khan, that Maidana mounted a comeback, right? He's behind. He wasn't able to close the gap. Khan won that fight, beat him. My point to you is, early in this fight, there's going to be a mismatch on hand speed. If Khan gets going and if Khan brings his A game and if Bud is baffled, for even four rounds, first third of the fight, Bud could find himself in trouble before a crowd that might be sympathetic to Amir Khan. Let me also say this too. You'd be stunned how much money Amir Khan has made in the sport of boxing. Few people have made more. Because understand, the boxing crowd has figured out that this guy is so talented right talented that he's credible against bigger opponents like Saul Alvarez so the six to one to me is crazy right that's crazy I think Khan has at least a 35% chance of winning this fight. Right? Let's say the line should be 2 to 1 instead of 6 to 1. So, 
I like Khan to win because I think he's undervalued here. I expect Crawford to win. Crawford just took out Jeff Horn. You could tell that was a statement fight. Crawford, when he wants, can sit down on punches. I'm sure Crawford, and I know Crawford claims he hasn't looked at a lot of film, that's BS. Crawford's a guy who always shows up prepared. You see that from the first round. I'm guessing Crawford realizes that he should be able to hit Khan with the same right hand that Canelo and that Sammy Vargas hit Khan with. Right? Crawford should realize that if he just keeps his head, he has a chance at a stoppage. My hedge is Crawford by stoppage. The bet I'm recommending in this video, and it's high risk, this is a high risk play, is Khan at 6-1 to one to win the fight, hedged with Crawford by stoppage. You'll be surprised how bad the Crawford by stoppage odds are. But understand, because you're getting 6-1 to one on the Khan side of the play, that enables you to pay the stiff price for Crawford by KO. That's how I see the fight. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comments section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.